A lot of people can't comprehend that. Now you're over two million after mm -hmm. what, five years? Yeah. So five years in, you make two million, people can divide that, be like, oh, that makes sense. You know, 400,000 a year, that's, yeah. that's good. What's up, Tim Sykes here with Jack Two. Yes. <laughs> He's now made over two million dollars. He's not called Jack Two because of two million. It's probably gonna be three million in the next few months. <laughs> It's Jack two because Jack Kellogg, he was Jack number one. He's made over eight million. Mm -hmm. How have you done it? What stocks do you trade? How do you find them? What scanners do you use? Uh, I mainly stick to listed. And as for the scan and go, I just do big percent gainers. And it has to have like a specific amount of volume that it's trading on the day. Because I can't really be in anything that's illiquid. What's your minimum volume? Um, about a, at least a thousand trades. And if it's pre-market, I want to see over like 50 to 100,000 shares traded. about by end of the day? What's like your ideal volume amount? I just use the same scanner because by the end of the day, I'll have like 800 in the list. Yeah. And then back in like January and February, I would go through all 800 of the stocks just to be familiar Dude, with the Dude, January market. and February 2021, that was like, I literally was like cracking out. Were you, were, oh, could yeah. you keep up? Like I couldn't keep up with the number of plays. Oh no, I just said sayonara to school at that point. Really? And I was like, I'm just going to trade. I had to like drop a class for it. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in school while making $2 million. Do your professors know? Do your classmates know? Uh, no. Uh, two of my classmates do. Have they, did you be like, don't tell anybody? Uh, no, they just don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Not since you cut their tongues out. Here, I'll tell you something. <laughs> what would your professors do if they knew? Um, I don't know. Was it one of your professors anti-trading? Uh, no, they're actually, so it's a quantitative finance program. Okay. So a lot of it is like a very active approach to okay. the stock market. Who was, the, who was the teacher? Oh, it was one of your old teachers who was Oh anti. yeah, okay. at the uh, undergrad. Okay, so <laughs> grad school, they're into trading because they're like, they've graduated thinking, mm -hmm. but like undergrad, no trading. Oh yeah, the guy was just saying, you should only buy ETFs ever. And then there's a simulator for like the whole semester. And I think he finished up about 20% and I was like 550. <laughs> Did you show him? Oh yeah, I was on the leaderboard. I ah. didn't even have to tell him about it. <laughs> really, was he like, you got lucky? Oh yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't give you props? He, he was bitter. He was so bitter. Damn. So he's yeah. just like, ah. the professor. Yeah, the, uh, the guy's just. So you should have been the professor looking back. You should have been <laughs> like, I'm taking you over your class. You're unqualified, you're out. <laughs> Would you have done that? Uh, I did it in more subtle ways. How? So at one point he was trying to reference a book. He's like, yeah, there's this good book about uh, high frequency trading. It's called uh, like Flash Boys. Yeah. <laughs> he's he like, said that? He's like, yeah, Flash Boys. <laughs> you, you just screams it out? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, you're like that know-it-all kid in the class. I wouldn't well, like you either. I'm very nice, but like he's... He was bitter to me for no reason. Yeah, well, because you, you represent everything that he doesn't believe in. Yeah. I think you should go back there and show him your profit chart and get it on video and be like, what do you <laughs> think now? And see his reaction. Uh, no, I, th I think where I'm at now is best revenge. <laughs> You're more noble than I am. I'm, <laughs> I'm much less classy. I would go back there and I'd be like, how's your ETF doing, by the way? <laughs> right? The market on the whole, don't misunderstand me. Mm -hmm. Overall, if you don't have a lot of time, if you want passive income, investing in the S&P 500, investing in an ETF, mm -hmm. that's fine, okay? We're not knocking that for no. most people. You put in an inordinate amount of time, mm -hmm. right? I put in ridiculous amounts of time. So if you're actively trading, it's different than passively trading. Oh, yeah. So I want to be very clear. ETFs, fantastic. If you don't have time, if you have a job, if you don't care about trading, it's, yeah. it's right for some people. But I do find that value investors, ETF investors, mutual fund investors, they look down on everybody else. Mm -hmm. They're like, this is the only way. It's very pompous. <laughs> and it's like, this is not the only way. Your way sucks. You're so <laughs> narrow-minded, you can't even see it. Yeah. Like I used to be in the Financial Writers Association. Like It was all these people who wrote all these articles and everything. Oh, yeah. And they were so conservative. They're like, Tim, we like you, but you shouldn't trade penny stocks. <laughs> like, literally, when I wrote my book, everyone was like, you shouldn't publish that. Like this is, this is sending the wrong signal. I was like, why? Like, yeah. it, it's worked for me. They didn't think that I could successfully teach penny stock trading. They thought mm -hmm. that he was either I was lucky, maybe I was, like, extremely talented, or I was a fraud. Mm -hmm. They didn't think the other alternative where there's so much opportunity and I'm taking a small piece of it and I can easily teach it to other people. Oh, yeah.
That's what, that's what I think. I don't know. Do you think this is teachable to others watching this? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, there have been so many people before me that I learned from them. Now I'm kind of teaching people, which is crazy, but... Thank yeah. you for all your help Everybody. in the challenge chat room, by the way. He is in the challenge chat room. His username is NO7, number seven. Why do you like so many aliases? Um, keeps me undercover. Right. If one goes bad, I can just switch. Oh, there you go. Are you like like a superhero, right? Like Bruce yeah. Wayne or like Batman. You're like, no, that's not me. I'm not number seven. I'm not Jack Daniel. <laughs> number eight <laughs> no what do you think about the challenge chat room if you want in on the challenge chat room by the way a lot of people ask me you want to sign up no you have to apply if you click the link below you apply for the challenge you go through a whole interview process did you go through the whole interview process mm -hmm. you did the homework yeah. you went through it and everything oh yeah now you're in the challenge that's how you get in you can't just pay to get in we don't allow everybody most people are too lazy they have the wrong attitude we don't allow toxic people mm -hmm. what do you think of the challenge chat room oh it's wonderful there's so much content in there just to learn from. Right? Oh, yeah. And there's good people. Like People have like the right yeah. attitude. I think it's important for a community to have people who are like, okay, let me learn this, let me learn this. Not like there's a lot of communities out there where it's like mm -hmm. follow the leader. Like oh, everyone yeah. buy this stock. If you sell, you're weak. And it's like, what? Oh, yeah. That's not. And even in there, like, when I had like my first like hundred dollar gain, I was getting all these congratulations yeah. and like I got a three hundred dollar gain. I think he like tweeted it too. Yeah. And I was like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's small it's gains adding up yeah. and getting, you know, congratulations. Like it's not just about like making a million or two. Mm -hmm. Eventually, yes, but small gains add up. Actually, leave that comment below this video. Small gains add up. Do mm -hmm. you understand that? Oh yeah. Why are so many people having problems with this? Like the promoters um, say like, oh, Sykes, you'll pay Sykes more than like learning how to make money. And I'm like, this is the process. Like you, yeah. you promoters lie. Oh yeah, they only lie. Why do people not appreciate small gains? Um, everybody just wants to make a killing at first without doing the work. And I mean, that's not how it works. And yeah. you can't just make like a ton of money at one point. I mean, yeah. for my first like $10,000 trade, which I think I celebrated that one really hard. Nice, what'd you do? But, uh, a lot of Chick-fil-A. Yeah! <laughs> but uh, it took me like three and a half, four years to get that. And were people making fun of you from the outside being like, you're spending three years to learn <laughs> how to make 10 grand? Like, that's pretty bad. If you look oh, at no. the time spent versus the money earned. If I ever thought they wouldn't understand it, I just didn't even talk about it to them. Yeah. But a lot of people can't yeah. comprehend that. Now you're over 2 million after mm -hmm. what, five years? Yeah. So five years in, you make two million. People can divide that, be like, "Oh, that makes sense." You know, four hundred thousand a year. That's yeah. that's good. But for three years, you made ten grand. Mm -hmm. So how do I get people to stick around for three years while they might make or lose ten grand? It doesn't even matter in the beginning whether mm -hmm. you're plus or minus ten grand. I know that sounds crazy. A lot of people are like, "I want ten grand." Mm -hmm. Most people don't have ten grand. Do you realize this? Oh yeah. You know, like the vast majority of America does not have ten grand to their name. Wow. Right. <laughs> And here you are with like two million after like a year and a half of yeah. successful trading. But you put in the time and effort early on to yeah, develop absolutely. your skills so that then you can make the two million. So how do I get more people to do that? How do I get them to have the patience at the beginning when it's the hardest? Patience. Uh, one of the biggest things for me was seeing like a $56,000 gain in a day. And ever since that, I was just chasing it because I knew it would be possible if somebody else is doing it. So can I. So. So I should I show off more it. challenge students who are crushing it, then it inspires you to keep learning. Yeah. Because now you've met, like we're here in this office in Texas. Now you've mm -hmm. met Roland. You, have you met Huddy? Or Huddy wasn't here. Huddy left like two days before you got here. Oh, yeah, he's gone. Roland, um, you know, Bryce, not the sharpest tool in the shed, <laughs> like at all. And he's over 600,000. He made 8,000 today, right? Yeah. And he, I literally, I don't even know how he got his license. Like I wouldn't <laughs> want him on the road next to me. Like, <laughs> I'm always like looking for extra seatbelts when he's driving. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't have the hand-eye coordination, right? Like I'm just like, you just don't know without oh, yeah. that. But even he's made over 600,000 now, right? Yeah, it's unreal. And Kyle Williams, he's over 2 mm -hmm. million too. I think you and Kyle are like, have you talked to Kyle a lot? Uh, He left a little early, but I've definitely talked with him a few times. But you talk with Jack a lot. Yeah. The Jacks. We're always Is there like, like a chat room with all Jacks? <laughs> Is it like the Jack room? Oh, that'd be cool. Right? <laughs> No. He'd keep you out. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, I wouldn't make it. Um, no, there was that thing. What was it? Battle of the Joshes. Did you see this? Mm -mm. There was like, this is like an internet meme where someone said like, 
every Josh come to this place at this date and time, and we're going to battle it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Josh. I think it was Josh. I don't even know. Like a little six-year-old one. Yeah, and they all had, like, little noodles, and they're, like, fighting each other. And they're like, this is the internet. Um, congratulations on all the success. Mm-hmm. One question, what, what should people do? Like, should they look at big percent gainers? What should their scans be? Uh, yeah, look at big percent gainers and keep them in your watch list for, like, uh, multiple, like a week, maybe two weeks even, because that's where some of the biggest setups come because the only way you can get a huge breakout in a chart is if there's a bunch of shorts piling on it. And once all the uh, initial liquidity is gone, the only people that are left are shorts. And so if it starts grinding up and they get squeezed. Yeah. I mean, so you want the multi-day runners. Former yeah. runners can become runners again. So don't just keep a big percent gainer yeah. on your watch list for one day like too many people do. And then they throw it out for a new big percent mm-hmm. gainer. Sometimes these plays, the setups take two, three, four, five days yeah. to evolve. Like right now as we're filming this, M-R-I-N is a giant short squeeze. Mm-hmm. It's like on day five or day six. Yeah. It's spiking more on day five or day six than it ever had on day one, day two, day three, or day four. Yeah, and there's a reason AMC wasn't in one day or two days. Yeah, That's so the best run-ups are multiple up. days. Leave a comment if you understand that. Click the like button, subscribe. Give this guy congratulations. And thank <laughs> him for sharing his story.